Namaskaram Sadhguru. You said that depending upon how compulsive we are and as per our karma we attract certain situations or life arranges itself accordingly. But for an enlightened being who has no karma, what determines <laughs> the nature of situation he or she gets into or the way life pans out? We have seen you face some of the most challenging situations. What is the mechanics behind this? <laughs> the question should be about you. So, uh, whoever told you an enlightened being does not have karma? An enlightened being has immense karma, much, much more than others. Yes? Because uh, without karma, if you're at a certain level of energy, without a certain weightage of karma, you cannot remain grounded. This is why ninety percent of the time enlightenment and leaving the body happens at the same time. Because if you do not consciously ground yourself with substantial weighty kind of karma, then uh, you cannot stick to the body. First thing to understand is, that karma is not some negative trash. It's only because of karma, you are who you are. When we say karma, we're talking about layers and layers of memory which makes you who you are. There is evolutionary memory which makes you a human being. Suppose your body lost its evolutionary memory, well, you may start crawling because you are a human being, not by knowledge, by a huge amount of evolutionary memory invested in every cell in your body, which makes you be human. You have seen uh, <laughs> when we do certain programs which are connected to getting into or putting our fingers into deep levels of karma like samyama. Uh, certain people start crawling, certain people start doing things. This is simply because uh, we are sinking certain things deep inside, it's touching their evolutionary karma and things are happening. Well, there is an immense amount of karma, starting from the evolutionary or even before, the elemental karma is there, we will not go into it, it's too complex. But you understand the evolutionary karma. Let's say, see right now the frogs are happy in the evening for whatever reasons, they're doing quack, quack, quack. I don't know who found the connection about kissing the frog and turning them into human beings <laughs> uh, all those things, but uh, Suppose you lost your evolutionary karma and somewhere around amphibious life, somewhere around a frog, you stopped. After that, what memory you had is gone. Suddenly, you may be a princess, but you will turn into a frog. Yes? Because it's this memory which is so invested in every cell in your body, which gives you a human form and a sense of being human being. So who you are, essentially, the shape and form of you is just karma, because it's memory. Like this, there are many levels of it, I will not go into all of it. Now, there is a genetic karma. Because of that, you have a particular kind of nose, a particular kind of, uh, you know, a skin, particular behavioral aspects, certain amount of capabilities and incapabilities, genetic karma is there. After that, your own stuff is there, articulate, inarticulate and now conscious karma. Now karma is not a negative thing if you know how to use it. But if you do not become conscious enough to use it, then it la runs like a software. 
Let us say there is a software on the computer you use or the phone that you use, I think computers are gone. Only a few people seem to be using computers, everybody is only this. So phone is a computer in a way. So whatever software that is on it, well whatever work you're doing, let's say every eleven seconds, I'm choosing that number intentionally, every eleven seconds you should do boom boom doom, every eleven seconds is good boom boom doom, believe me, after a few months, you yourself will start doing every eleven seconds boom boom doom, yes you will. But the software is only in the phone. But if it keeps on doing it every day, see right now the chant is going on around the ashram, some of you, ah, oh, why is it going on all the time? But slowly, unknowingly, yoga, yoga <laughs> That's how it is <laughs> We are programming you towards liberation. Many people and you yourself may be programming yourself to bond age. Because <laughs> a whole lot of people are always trying to build bonds with something or the other. Because they think only by tying themselves to something or somebody, they will feel safe. If you have a bond with age, it becomes bond age. No, I'm just playing with you. But all bonds unconsciously developed and unconsciously it exists with you become bondages. Well, bonds are like, you know, a sailor will throw an anchor in a place so that there, in case there is a small storm, the boat doesn't go away somewhere, so you put an anchor. It's a very good thing if you want to be safe in one place. But you are in a damn boat because you want to sail. So if you keep on putting five, ten anchors, obviously you will be safe, but you will never sail. So you have to make up your mind, you want to sail or you want to be safe. So, oh, you have seen me go through all kinds of situations, all kinds <laughs> I don't know who's asking this question, how does he know what all I go through? <laughs> Too many things, all kinds of rubbish, lots of wonderful things also, lots of absolutely wonderful things, but uh, lots of trash also comes my way. Well, what's his name? That's his real name? Nishant. Shashank. So no, Shashank has been very closely around me to see all the nonsense that comes my way. Anyway, if Shashank is well informed because he has access to somebody around me, or he's just reading it in the news, all the nonsense, Unfortunately, in the news, only the nonsense they're reporting, all the wonderful things that happens to me, they don't usually report. That's their karma <laughs> So, lots of absolutely wonderful things every day being thrown at me. If nobody throws anything anywhere, I sit very wonderful wherever I am. But some trash also comes my way. Well, the trash is coming not simply, simply because when you have nothing to lose and nothing to gain, you can do whatever you want. Either you can go sit in a mountain cave, simply blissed out, or you can get active in the world, you can do many things. You can be somewhat active, somewhat withdrawn or all-out active, depends. What's your choice? My choice has been shaped by the needs in the world, not by my whim. 
till <laughs> till I consecrated Dhyanalinga, there was only one intent. Because uh, I am somebody's slave, I don't want to tell you all those terrible things which have been beautiful to me. A man who doesn't even want to touch me with his foot, he touches me with a stick, I served that man for three lifetimes. So, that's a terrible story, but with fantastic results. Because I'm result-oriented, I value the result, I don't resent the touch with the stick. Many of you have these issues, that's why I'm telling you. Sudhguru didn't even look my way. He doesn't <laughs> So, <laughs> because my activity since Dhyanalinga, till then I was not bothered about anything else, just one thing. I thought that's it and with that I will even end. Because I had not created an intent in my mind as what I will do beyond that. So things collapsed, things happened, whatever, that's all history now, every one of you know it probably. When the body began to collapse very badly, when my basic structure got very badly damaged and uh, became almost like a, what to say, <laughs> little crippled, then it became like a challenge, let's see if we can get back. And there were also some absolutely wonderful and dedicated people around me who were willing to give their life if necessary. So for their sake and also as a challenge, if we can really build back the system, uh, we took up certain things and started working, which is another kind of karma. Well, uh, those of you who have seen me since uh, 99, that is 1999, because a whole lot of millennials who do not know there was a twentieth century, you know. So in the year 1999, if you had seen me, and today you are seeing me, well, in terms of physical well-being, I am leaps and bounds ahead of what I was twenty years ago. In twenty years, decline should have happened, but in ten, twenty years, I am way better than what I was. It's clearly visible in every way. So, uh, once we successfully built back the system, then the question was, okay, what the hell do we do? My long-term dream, you know, <laughs> that I will ride away across the world, not a care in the world, simply full tank, open road, gone. That was the dream of that time. Even if my stomach was empty, it didn't matter. Motorcycle tank was full, road was empty, this virus time, this lockdown time should be really nice to ride. Almost every road is like a racetrack, but uh, I'm not allowed to ride, so. <laughs> so, uh, that dream I thought, shall I revive? But all the people around me, without them I wouldn't have had the intent to go through that enormous striving that it took of almost three years or three and a half years to build back the system, I wouldn't have had the intent without all these people looking hopefully at me. If I didn't have that, I wouldn't have had the intent to build it back. So then naturally got involved with people, their spiritual process, then when you went to teach spiritual process, then you saw people are hungry, somebody is sick, nothing happening for them, so we got involved in the social process, then we saw even if somebody is just about getting enlightened, there is not even a tree in the village. So we started planting trees <laughs> to a point where people are calling me tree planter. 
So all this karma. But what do you think? Look at me and tell me, you think this karma is taking a toll on me? Sometimes I might not have slept well, I might look little. But does it, does it look like it's taking a toll on me? Because I want you to understand, all of you, get this straight. The simplest way to deal with all the humongous mountains of karma that you may have, because if you have a, a Himalayan-sized karmic, karmic background, it's very good. That means you have a complex structure. But if this complex tor structure tortures you and you will use your torture to torture everybody else around you, then it's a disaster. But if you use this complexity, because complexity is needed, to come out with very significant solutions. If you have no complexity, usually you're called a simple fellow in England. In India we call them simpleton. Uh, people will have compassion for you, but no passion for you. Yes, it's a sad way to live. So now, if you want to deal with your karma, the simplest thing is, you sit here, absolute dispassion for this one, total passion for everything else, this is all. Right now the problem is people have enormous passion for their life, but they have dispassion for other people's well-being and suffering and whatever is happening. This is why, this is why right now the world is saluting the doctors and nurses who are sticking their life out there to work for somebody because they are showing passion for other lives and dispassion for themselves. This is a sure way of release. So this is all you have to do. You must reverse the equation. Too much passion for yourself, no passion for others, no. Absolute passion for every life around you, total dispassion towards yourself. You don't worry about all this karmic nonsense, you are gone, you are free from this rubbish.